the testimony of two, the Father and the Son, John chapter 8, verses 16 through 18. Jesus said in John chapter 8, 16 through 18, You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. So here we see that God with us as a man bears witness as a human witness, and the Father that sent the Christ child, the man Christ Jesus, bears witness as God. God as God the Father bears witness as God, and God with us as a man can bear witness as a man. This is why John chapter 5 verse 26 says, Jesus speaking, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. God as God, the Father, has the divine life in himself outside of the Incarnation, and God with us as a man inside the Incarnation has a distinct human life in himself, which explains why Jesus could pray, Jesus could suffer and die, and Jesus could be tempted of evil. We know that God as God is not tempted of evil, neither does he tempt any man. But when God became a distinct man with a distinct human life in himself, it enabled him to pray and be tempted of the devil. So we know that Jesus Christ is not just God with us in an external shell of flesh. Jesus is God with us who became a true man with a true human nature, a true human mindset, a true human ability to pray and to even suffer temptations. While the Father has always been the timeless divine Holy Spirit, without a beginning in time, the Son of God was granted life in himself as a distinct human life with a specific beginning in time. For John 5.26 explicitly states that the Son was granted life in himself by being made fully human in every way as a true human being. The Greek word for granted literally means to give. The Greek word for life simply means life. Therefore, Jesus was given life in himself by God the Father by being made fully human in every way, according to Hebrews 2.17. Made is from a Greek word that means to make or to construct. So, how could a timeless, co-equal God the Son be made or constructed with a fully complete human life just like all humans are made. He was made exactly like his human brethren, fully human in every way according to Hebrews 2.17, as a true human being. This explains why Psalm 2.7 says, You are my son, this day have I given birth to you. The word for begotten is the Hebrew word yolad, which is used for the births of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4, 1 and 2. So since yolad does not mean, literally mean, a timeless birth, in other contexts of scripture, it's the same Hebrew word yolad means the births of human individuals, such as the births of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4. Therefore, if we are to believe inspired words in scripture we must believe that Jesus as a child born and son given was born or given birth to on a specific day when he was born at Bethlehem this is why God the Father said during the Old Testament time period I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son in the prophetic future when he spoke these words to King David about his future child Solomon we find in Hebrews 1.5, 
that it cites 2 Samuel 7.14 with this exact same quote to show that this prophecy about Solomon also references Jesus Christ. When God the Father said during the time of, the, of King David, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. So how could God say in the lifetime of King David, I will be to him the son a father, and he will be to me a son, Jesus Christ, in the prophetic future, if the son was already at the side of the father throughout eternity past? This could not be the case. It would be totally ridiculous for God to say, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. If the son literally existed as a son beside God the Father before his incarnation, before God the Father became a man. Just as the omnipresent Father outside of the incarnation has a life in himself, so the living Father has given or granted the Son also to have life in himself within the incarnation via virgin conception and birth. Thus we have only one true God, our omnipresent Father, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, as the Son who was granted a distinct human life within the Virgin. This explains how the distinct human life of the Son of God within the Incarnation could give testimony as one distinct human witness, while the Father as God the Father remained unchangeable in the heavens to give testimony as one distinct divine witness. This is precisely what we'd expect if we are to believe that God became a man via virgin conception and birth. For God as God cannot vacate heaven and cease being God for a while to become a man. God continued to remain unchangeable in the heavens while he simultaneously became a man with a distinct human life in himself. This is what we are to believe that God also became a man. If Jesus is just God in, in an external shell of human flesh, and didn't have a human spirit with a truly and fully complete human nature, then Jesus couldn't have prayed. Jesus could not have experienced temptation. He could not have suffered and died with human sufferings. Jesus clearly had human emotional sufferings when he was on the cross, when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt God forsaken just like any other man. When the omnipresent God became a man within the Hebrew virgin, he entered into a distinct human life inside of the Incarnation. This explains how Jesus could experience human attributes inside of the Incarnation as a distinct human son, while he simultaneously remained distinct with his divine attributes outside of the Incarnation as the omnipresent Father. For God as God always remained unchangeable in the heavens, while God also simultaneously became a man in order to save his people from their sins. Therefore, Jesus as a child born and son given was made fully human in every way, while he has always existed without a beginning as the mighty God and everlasting Father, who remains the same yesterday, today, and forever in his divinity. This explains Malachi 3.6, where God the Father says, I am Yahweh, I change not. Yahweh, as a true Yahweh person, cannot change. His inviolable attributes are forever intact. Hebrews 1.3 says that Jesus, the Son of God, as a man, is the brightness of His, the Father's glory, and the express image of His, the Father's person. Since Jesus is the express image of the Father's person, he is the express image of the Father's divine person with us as a fully complete human person who is made exactly like his brethren, fully human in every way, according to Hebrews 2, verse 17. Since Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, he could not have lost any of his divine attributes, such as his divine attribute of omnipresence. This is why Jesus, knowing his true identity as God with us as a man, could say before Abraham was, I am, in John chapter 8, verse 58. Since Numbers 23, 19 proves that God is not a man, we know that Jesus is not literally God with us as God, but rather Emmanuel, God with us as a true man,
who had the capacity to pray, the capacity to suffer, and the capacity to be tempted of the devil. James 1.13 says that God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Hence we know that Jesus is not God with us as God, but God with us as a distinct man who lived an authentic and distinct human life, a life in himself. Therefore, only the omnipresent God, who is our Heavenly Father, is the only being who can simultaneously become a man with a distinct human life as the Son in order to save us while remaining unchangeable in the heavens with his distinct divine life, God as God the Father. When you think about it, only the omnipresent God can act and speak in many places at once. Since that is the case, it is possible for Jesus to be the arm of Yahweh revealed as an extension of our only true God, the Father himself, who could simultaneously act and speak in his humanity when God, after God became a man, which only occurred after the incarnation to the Virgin, while he could simultaneously speak in the heavens as God, the Father, with his unchangeable divine attributes intact. This explains how only God himself, as the only true God the Father, can remain one in his distinct essence or substance of being. Hebrews 1.3 says that Jesus is the substance of being of the Father, reproduced as a human being. So the one true God, our Heavenly Father, has a distinct essence of being, with a distinct divine testimony within himself, while he also became a distinct human son with a distinct human testimony within himself. This is what we are to expect if we are to truly believe that God, who is the only true God the Father, also became a distinct human Christ child who could suffer, who could die for our sins and experience human suffering and temptations, just like all men. This explains why Hebrews 2.17 states that the God who partook of flesh and blood, who shared in our humanity, was also made exactly like his brethren, fully human in every way. Therefore, we know that God as God, outside the Incarnation, who remained unchangeable in the heavens with his divine attributes fully intact, could give testimony or bear witness to Jesus, and also why the Son of God, as a distinct human life in himself, who was granted life in himself by God the Father, had a distinct human life, a life that could experience all the human attributes that all humans have. He was without sin, we know, but he also had that capacity to be truly tempted of the devil. So God, as God outside the Incarnation, could act and speak and bear witness about the Son independently from the Son as a human witness because God was manifest in the flesh to be made fully human in every way. Therefore, Jesus could pray not as God, as God praying, just like Jesus was not God as God experiencing temptations, suffering the ability to go through temptations, which is not easy. He resisted every temptation, but he had the capacity to experience temptation. Therefore, Jesus inside, God the Father inside the Incarnation, who became a true man through the Hebrew Virgin, could also bear witness and give distinct human testimony because he also was granted or given a distinct life in himself as a human being. Now we know that only God the Father is omnipresent. He's the only divine being who can fill the heavens and the earth and act and speak simultaneously in many places at once. Therefore, man and, and angels cannot act and speak with a two, in two different places at once, but only God the Father can speak and act in two different places at once. This explains the Incarnation in that we are to believe that God became a fully complete man with a distinct human life in himself. For more videos like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel 
or visit us on the web at apostolicchristianfaith.com. Lord bless.